are African tribes. So Deuteronomy 7, 1, it says, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and have cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. From Deuteronomy 20, 17 through 18, it says, But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely, the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that they teach you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done unto their gods, so should ye sin against the Lord your God. Now understand what's being said here. And this is where you have to really get your mind out of the whole spookiness of the Bible. And they have people believe, believe in, in this concept of this all powerful God. Well, of course they can, go, they can go do all this. You know, God is on their side, but you have to come to reality and be esoteric about what it's talking about. It says seven nations mightier than you, stronger than you. The ancient Egyptian empire is the greatest empire we have seen in recorded history. We haven't found a civilization that did what they did. And we copy everything they do. And everybody around the world has used what we see there in Kemet, even the Chinese. So ask yourself, we're talking about a people, these Aryans, white folks. How could they possibly come down from the cold having nothing, not knowing how to do anything? and conquer the greatest civilization that we know of. How is that possible? How could they come up with a plan, execute it flawlessly? It goes unimaginably perfect, and they do exactly what they set out to do and take away the empire we built. How are they able to do this without no power structure? They obviously had a power structure. It's obviously somebody at the top. And this person at the top, is God. Now I've been showing you that the Hebrews in the Bible, the Israelites, are really the Greeks. We talked about this in a couple of videos. We talked about the book Hebrews Greek. Talked about a bunch of things. But I've been showing you that these people are the Greeks. And the stories that they're talking about going out conquering, we know they're talking about themselves and what they did. Now the Jews claim that they were enslaved in ancient Egypt held captive and for, forced to work against their will, so on and so forth. But again, the only people we find to fit this as anything, you know, involving the Egyptians, who was the closest to them? It was the Greeks. The Greeks lived amongst them. And the Greeks was the only one who was in Egypt. But were they slaves? They wasn't slaves. They were citizens. They were allowed to live there. They were being taught and trained by the ancient Egyptians which we have Tales and Aristotle attested this, Herodotus attested this. We were going into Egypt. We were learning. They was teaching us stuff, the mystery schools, so on and so forth. It wasn't that anybody was enslaved there because like I said, Herodotus would have talked about it. So clear as day, the only people who could have been coming out of Egypt is the Greeks. So look at where everything changes. So when the Israelites come out of Egypt, their story starts. Everything changes for them. It's the same thing with the Greeks. When they come out of Egypt, everything changes. Everything starts with them as far as them building this, the, the empire that they built. So we got to think about it. And it's going to take a conscious person to really grasp what's being said. You know, let my people go. God even, God saying it's my people, the people of Israel, let my people go. Right? So clearly, it can only be speaking about white Greeks, talking about white people. Let my people go. Ham, Shem, Japheth, they are all the sons of Emzara and Noah. Emzara is their mom. And they all came from the same mom. They should all look alike. How is these people your people and not everybody your people? And we're told today, of course, God loves all. Everybody is one, so on and so forth. But these specific people, it's saying, let my people go. These are my people. They're chosen, set apart. What's setting them apart? They're white. Not in the biblical sense, 
but esoterically in the Bible, not in the biblical sense. It's not saying in the Bible that these people are white. Esoterically outside of it is giving you white people, plain and simple, being set apart. And I showed you guys what these Jews look like when you see them. Psalms 103, showed you this in the last video. The Lord himself is God. Know that it is he who has made us. But didn't he make everybody? Hmm. We didn't make ourselves. Know that we are his people. It's saying, out of black people, I made you white. Who runs the world right now? The Jews. But they're just hiding behind this whole Jewish thing. They're not, it's no such thing as a Jew. It's something they created to hide behind. It's really white folks. So again, like I said, when I showed you the Jews at the White House, just look behind the beard. It's a white people. And again, as I talked about, when you go to Israel and look at the people, they're just mixed with the Arabs, all the same people. All Shem or Shemitic would be considered Shemitic, which would be anybody that's mixed in with white folks. The trick is these black Hebrews are being confused because they know, well, of course, had to be black because Ham was clearly black. And he's just cursed. But they're giving you DNA and all kinds of stupid shit. But wait a minute, they they brothers. Came from the same mom, same dad. Right? But they don't see the esoteric part of it where it's saying, no, we're talking about these specific people, white Jews, white people. They run in the world. And again, we look at the story in the Bible. You know, go out, kill these people. And then we read. They start dividing stuff. I remember first Samuel, second Samuel, so I put out the Bible series. They dividing stuff up. We're gonna go out, kill these people who did absolutely no, nothing. There's no Bible around to tell them to live and follow, follow God, which is telling you that this is something different. Even the Bible tells you, oh, don't serve their God, meaning that there's multiple gods. Notice how in the Bible, when it's describing God, it's talking about human traits, jealousy, anger vengeful, that God makes mistakes. You have to understand one minute he's all-knowing, one minute he doesn't know anything. He can't tell what's going to happen. He's telling people to go do stuff that he could do easily. The next minute, he's sending an angel down to destroy. What is it talking about? Is this a human or is this a God? Somebody with powers. And they're not clear on that because they want you to be confused. And I gave you guys this understanding. That it must be. So if they have a God, then who is this God of Israel? Who is this God? Who are you? I'm the Lord, your God. You don't mess with their God. But we look at what happened. Exactly like in the Bible. They went out, conquered our land, took our stuff. They're on top. And it's giving you this story to get you to understand what took place. And then if you look at it biblically, and then start to trace history, it starts to look like, well, oh, wait a minute, maybe the Bible is right, because that's what we see. You have to understand how to read the Bible and know when it's talking about, you know, multiple people. Understand it esoterically when it's talking about multiple people, multiple gods, it's multiple things that a lot of these stories, as I said in the beginning, is talking about. Genesis 1 is not esoterically giving you, you know, the soul, consciousness, or what have you. It's giving you the first creation. The first people, us, plain and simple, children of the sun. God is the sun going to make you on my image. That will be us, the black woman. And it's giving you that first creation, real people. And then this is why the confusion is there, because then we have Adam and Eve. And then, you know, we're told they're the first people. But you have to understand who is it talking to. Now, if you're reading this book, and let's go back in the day, of course, white folks, and, you know, as we've been shown, when they would read, you know, Genesis, they would see Adam and Eve as being white folks. And then how was Adam and Eve made from the dust of the ground, from the rib of Adam? But we understand esoterically, as I broke down what this talking about, but it's giving you a creation, you know, a creation. And when it says, there is no man to till the ground. And then the Lord said, I'm going to form man from the dust of the ground. Before you know, television was ever created. The person who invented television didn't say, hmm, I'm going to invent a television. There was no such thing as a television. So how can you say I'm going to invent a television when you ain't even create one yet? 
it doesn't exist, and you don't even know what you're going to call it. You know what I'm saying? So you can't say, hmm, I'm going to event a Bentley. You didn't even, a Bentley don't exist yet for you to say, I'm going to invent a Bentley. So when you say, let us make man, or I'm going to make man, excuse me, I'm going to make man from the dust of the ground. There's no man to till the ground. Implying what? That man already existed. Men have already existed. So I'm going to make a new man, a different man. And I'm going to have him do my bidding. Right? Understand what it's trying to tell you. You go in the garden. Don't touch these trees. Do everything else. Don't touch this stuff. This is all esoteric stuff is giving you. And it's going to be hard for people to accept. But you have to look at history and what we know. We've been here for hundreds of thousands of years. Then this happens recently as it relates to the world. This is a recent event. I mean, being honest. And, you know, the Egyptians ruled, you know, 4,000 years ago. And obviously these people just came out of nowhere. And then you know, black people, hundreds of thousands of years, all of a sudden, white folks, and then look what happened. They was put here to do what they've done. So again, when it's saying that God said, there's no man to till the ground, and he's going to create man from the dust of the ground, it's implying that man already exists. And same thing, we go back to what the Israelites were saying, when it's saying, you know, this is the Lord our God, you know, this is the God who made us. It's talk about the same thing. You know, we were made, we were made separately. Man already exists. We are a different type of man that was made, created. So then we go back to the garden. And again, Garden of Eden story is amazing. We got to look at it. So we have, you know, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They eat off the tree. They're kicked out of the garden. So it's the same thing. The same thing that God was trying to keep them from with the Garden of Eden story. It's the same exact thing he's trying to keep the Israelites away from later on the same thing. So think about it. If the Hebrews go in and follow the gods of the you know Gentiles and the Kyrgyzites and the Amorites and Jebusites and what have you, what would happen? They would know what? They're gods. You understand? Same thing that the serpent told them. So basically saying, well, wait a minute, if they go in and follow these black folks, they're going to know that they are gods. They're going to know who the real God is because it's not them. It's not the God that they're following. And you have to get your mind around the whole spooky story of God having his powers and superpowers, shit that you're never going to see. But understand what it's talking about. Because if he had all his power, he wouldn't need them to go in there and lay waste to these cities. He could just do it like that or send an angel down, which is another thing we're going to get into in uh, another video. You understand what that what that is, what that power is coming down. What is it talking about? You gotta understand, you know, what it's talking about is what possibly happened back then. And if you have these people come from out of nowhere, they don't all know what's going on, these white folks, Aryans. And then you have black people who have cities. They're doing so much spiritually and physically. And we're teaching them everything. And the civilization, the, the, the white people, they see this. They understand. Well, these are the people. They know everything, you know. Whether or not they understand that they mutated from them, doesn't matter. They're looking at them differently. And it's somebody there. Because think about it, the Bible way and the real way. Somebody is there saying, no, don't follow what they're telling you. But then you have the higher ups going into the mystery schools learning this stuff. But then they're saying esoterically, don't. They're telling them, don't follow, don't follow this stuff. Don't listen to them. You know, their gods are bad. Don't listen to this stuff. But of course, the people are like, what you mean? I don't listen to them. And it's giving you exactly what we see in the Bible when you understand that, you know, if the Hebrews were really dealing with the actual God who created everything, why would they disobey? Think about it. There's no way in the world. It can't be us. We wouldn't disobey. Why are they keep disobeying in the Bible? And then they're going back and they're following these other gods who must be real, who must exist and must have power. Because if they didn't, they've seen the true power of their God. 
why would they go and worship Moloch or any other god and understand who's talking about esoterically, which Moloch would be a bull. Osiris is a bull. You know, don't go and mess with these Egyptians. Don't go and mess with these Amorites and these people that come from the line of Ham, which would be black people. All of those tribes they named, black folks. And what do we also see? What happened? Didn't those Hebrews go and mix in with the Egyptians? Didn't they go and mix in with these other tribes? Yes. Also giving you the creation of the Arabs and other people, other races is trying to allude to. This happened, they went and mixed in. So understand again, you know, when they created Serapis, it wasn't just, you know, to get us to worship them as gods. It was also to convince, you know, the Europeans, the white folks as well, to see themselves as gods. But they could see who, you know, who had the land and the wealth and that they were killing these people and taking it. So they knew the truth. And this is stuff that had to happen over time, you know, with education, you know, indoctrination or what have you, for them to understand what was taking place or what they wanted them uh, to understand. And we got to look at it. We see who's in charge. We see exactly what happened. We know our history. Now, you tell me, you tell me, based on the Bible, if you wouldn't believe it, who seems to be the favorite people on this planet? Who seems to be the people in power? Who are the people in power? So, yeah, like I said, while yeah, the Hebrews may have it right on the race part, and it's fitting for them to look at it like we're cursed because of what happened to us. But it's clearly giving you that these has to be, they have to be God's chosen people. So God, God put them in charge. They are ordained of God to be the powers that be. So white folks, these are Jews who are running everything. White folks. And here we are sitting back. We got to wait till we die to get our blessing. But it separated us. And then we get into, you know, the New Testament. Jesus comes and say we are all one. Why? Because they knew when the King James Version was written, because it's the King James Version we're talking about. Forget 2,000 years ago. We don't know about the first century Bible and Vetus Latina, Latin Vulgate, what that actually said. Codex Sinaiticus, I showed you, Jesus' name is not even in there. So... We could take the abbreviation theory or what have you. It don't matter. We know the King James Version is different. So Jesus saying, you know, after they they won, they conquered everything, they have everything. In 1611, we're enslaved. Okay, let's give them Jesus now. This is a whole nother new way to enslave them. It's a new way that we can put out our plan. And now understand this. If you don't know history, you're never going to figure this out. If you don't understand esoterically, you know, anything about astrology or anything about the Egyptians or what have you, stuff I talk about, you would never be able to crack this code and, and do what we've just done in this video to understand. 